وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى تلزس سورة النحل فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون This is the meaning of this part of the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us Ask the people of knowledge, the scholars, the people of the Quran If you do not know So we want to find out something We ask the scholars and those who know and those who study And today inshallah We'll talk about one of these scholars inshallah And one of the books And this is about the book called Fiqh Al-Aqliyat Al-Muslimah the understanding, the religious understanding and rulings for the Muslim minorities. Written by Sheikh uh, Yusuf Al Qaradawi. And before we uh, talk about the book, we'll give a little biography about Dr. Yusuf so we know who are we talking about. As you know, I admire Sheikh Al Ghazali very much. And Sheikh Ghazali says about Sheikh Al Qaradawi, I taught Sheikh Qaradawi, but now he's my teacher. So he taught him, but now he's his teacher, and he would refuse to give a fatwa in the presence of a Sheikh Al Qaradawi because he knows more and he has much more knowledge and experience. Subhanallah. And in his biography, and I took this part from uh, Wikipedia on the internet, said he was born in Egypt in 26. He's an Egyptian Muslim scholar and a preacher and best known for his popular Jazeera program, Sharia and Life, and Islam Online, a website that he helped found in 1997, where he offers opinions and religious uh, edicts fatwa based on his interpretation and understanding of the Quran. He also published some 50 books, including Al-Halal and Haram in Islam, Lawful and Prohibited in Islam, and The Future Civilization. They also say, among many Muslims, he is considered a moderate conservative who seeks to explain and adapt the ideas of the Islamic lifestyle with those of modern society. Others consider him as a staunch Islamist who rejects universal human rights and some of the fundamentals of democracy. This is just a small thing. As for his life, he went to school from grade 1 to grade 12 at Al-Azhar, so he went to Al-Azhar, and he graduated in grade 12, number 2 in all of Egypt. And then he went to Azhar University, and he was the top of his class. He took two bachelors, one master, and one PhD. And that's how he became where he is today, his life studying Islam. And yet, subhanAllah, we ask in our community, somebody here who is giving us a fatwa, how did you learn Islam? I went to the Middle East for six months or a year. I learned Arabic and learned Islam, and he's coming back to teach us Islam and giving us fatwa. Or somebody who reads a hadith, and then he reads the hadith and coming giving us fatwa from reading this one hadith. When we see the true scholars, since grade one throughout his life, he's studying Islam and studying different opinions. And as we talk about this book, because subhanAllah, I was given this book as a present from a friend who asked me to read it over a year and a half ago, but I've always read for a Sheikh Al-Ghazali and I didn't have a chance to read this book. But on this last trip, I had a chance and there was a lot of, call it shocking things I read. And subhanAllah, it shows how wide Islam is and how great Islam is and we should not close our mind. He's taking issues that all of us discuss here in the West and presenting them in a discussion and giving us conclusions about them. So that's what I would like to share with you today. But don't take what I say as a fatwa or fiqh because I am summarizing some of his opinions and it's hard in 20 minutes to summarize what he said. If you want the fatwa, go and ask or go and read because some of the issues he's discussing are over a 20 page and I will summarize it in a minute or two. So to understand the full condition and the full things, you have to read the whole thing and ask those who know. But why I'm saying this here is that we open our minds to the possibilities. To realize that Islam, there is so much and the things we grew up with might not be 100% right. There are other opinions and other discussions. And that's what I hope we come out with today, rather than fatwas, because I am not a scholar and I might have misunderstood some of what was read. So here it is just to open the minds and for us to go and read and learn and understand. 
The first thing, subhanAllah, he gave us some rules for those who want to give fatwa. Two and a half page of, call them rules of some. Before you give a fatwa, you have to understand all those rules of some. Mm -hmm. And I'll just discuss some of them. Because subhanAllah, just two and a half page to understand before you can just make. These are some of the basic stuff. The first one he says, مَا لَا يَتِمْنَ الْوَاجِبْ بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبْ Meaning if something is obligatory on us, and we have to do something to achieve this, this something we have to do is ob also obligatory. For example, mm -hmm. if we have to pray jama'ah, and the only way we pray jama'ah is in the masjid, and the only way to find the masjid is to rent or build one, then it's obligatory to us to build or rent one, because it's obligatory to pray jama'ah, and if it's the only way that we pray the jama'ah is to have this place, so we have to have it. The other thing that we all know, the darar and the darar. In any ruling, there cannot be a ruling that causes harm to yourself or harm to others. There cannot be a fatwa that could cause harm to you or to others in Islam. And the next thing, harm could not be taken away with more harm. You tell somebody this is haram and you ask him to do something worse to take it away. So you can't take something wrong with something wrong similar or something worse. So you have to improve things rather than get things worse. And if you have a choice between two wrong things, choose the smaller one that causes less harm. And is a doctor amr taza, meaning if things get harder, they will eventually get much better. And mashaqa taglubil taysir, if things are hard on us, know that it will get better. So it's not going to be hard forever. Al-Muslimun عند شروطهم Muslims have to abide by whatever they agreed on. You can't come and say, no, I didn't agree to this. You have to respect whatever we agreed on. And then he said, المعروف عرف عرفا كالمشروط شرطا. If something we are used to among ourselves in the community, it's just like as if it's a condition. We don't have to put it in a contract because we know all of us take it for granted this is what's happening. And he goes on and on about conditions for the fatwa. So it's not just taking a hadith, it's saying the of what we know about in our community is part of this and we don't have to write it. <coughs> and then he discusses and says the Sahaba were always taking the easier thing. And as we know, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was given a choice between two things. If both are halal, he always took the easiest thing. And then he said, the followers of the Sahaba said, let's be careful. Let's take it, make it a little harder. And then their followers said, let's be careful. And let's make it a little harder. So he says, we reach an age now where we are chained. Because everybody said, be careful, be careful, be careful, till we are surrounded by chains of fear and things that we can't break out from. Rather than take the easy way out that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and his followers <coughs> have taken throughout time. And he narrates the ayah, مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجْ وَلَكُمْ لِيُرِيدُ لِيُطَهِرْكُمْ وَلَيْتَمْ مِنْ عَمَتُ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he brought this religion, he didn't mean it to put hardship or tough things on us. He wanted to purify us and complete his blessing. So Islam is to purify us and complete the blessing, not to make our life any harder or much tougher. tougher. Um, and he gave us the example when one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was wounded and then he had to wash to pray. So somebody gave him the fatwa, you have to go and have the shower. And he had the shower and died. So Rasul when he heard this, he said, you have killed him, you have killed him, you have killed him. Because somebody decided upon himself he has to shower, rather than there is circumstances, this man is wounded, and if he's wounded and uh, water comes on it, it would hurt him. 